Hello, teacher. Hello, students. Welcome to today's lesson. You remember, in our previous lesson, we saw the basic economic decision-making units. The basic economic decision-making units are households, business firms, government, and the rest of the world. Today's lesson focuses on circular flow of economic activities. First, let's define what circular flow model is, and then we will see flow types. Finally, we see models of circular flow. At the end of the lesson, you will be asked to draw circular flows of economic activities and interpret them. Are you ready? Good. Circular flow is a pictorial representation of the continuous flow of payments and receipts for goods and services and factors of production between different sectors of the economy. Economic transactions such as purchase and sale of goods and services and factors of production generate two types of flows, namely real flows and money or financial flows. Real flows imply the flow of resources from resources owner to the producers and goods and services from the producers to the buyers. As the figure shows, Factors of production are flowing from households to producers while goods and services are flowing from firms to households. Now let's see the second type of flow which is financial flows. Financial flows imply the flow of money income to the households in the form of rent, wage, interest and so on and the money they spend for the purchase of goods and services. As this figure shows, money income is received by households for the resources they supply and money is spent by households for the purchase of goods and services. Students, I hope you have understood the difference between real flows and financial flows. Note that real flows and money flows are two sides of the same coin, meaning each real flow is followed by a corresponding financial or money flow. Now let's see models of circular flow. There are two models of circular flows, namely two-sector model and three-sector model. The two-sector model consists of flows between the households and business firms, while the three-sector model includes the government in addition to households and business firms. Now, first let's see the two-sector model. There are two types of two-sector models, namely two-sector economy without saving in which income equals expenditure and two-sector economy with saving. Let us now see how these models show the flow in the economy. First, let's see two-sector economy without savings. There are certain assumptions that we use in the two-sector economy model without saving. The first assumption is that there are only two sectors in the economy, the household sector and the business firm. The second assumption is that households are owners of resources who supply resources for business firms. The third is that firms sell the entire output they produce to households. The fourth assumption is there is no saving in the economy, meaning households spend all their income. The fifth is that there is no government sector in the economy. The last assumption is that the economy is closed, therefore 
There is neither import nor export. Students, given the assumptions that we saw, let us see what the two-sector economic model without saving looks like. This two-sector model shows real flows and money flows. As you can see in the figure, there is a continuous flow of factors of production from households who own resources to business firms. Then, taking these resources, business firms produce goods and services. Then, the goods and services produced by business firms will be purchased by households for consumption. In the figure, real flows of goods and services and factors of production are shown by the circle that flows clockwise. Students, remember that for every real flow, there is a corresponding money flow. Let's see the figure again. As you can see, the households supply resources for firms. They receive payments from business firms in the form of wage, rent, interest or profit. Then, the money received by households will be paid for business firms for the goods and services that they supply. In this model, since there is no saving, the total receipt of business firms is equal to the total income of households. Therefore, first the money flows from firms to households and then back from households to firms. This is shown in the figure by the circle that flows anticlockwise. Students, I hope you understood the two-sector model without saving. Now, let us see the two-sector economy model with saving. We know that in the real world, not all income is spent on consumption. Part of it is saved. So let us relax the assumption of no savings and assume that households save part of their income. Households deposit part of their income as savings in the capital market or financial system such as banks. As you can observe from the figure, capital market or financial institutions mediate between households and business firms. Part of the income saved by households is deposited in capital market. Then business firms borrow this money from the capital market and invest to produce goods and services. Students, I hope you understand the two-sector economy model with and without saving. Please discuss the following question in groups of three or four students and agree on the answer. Teacher, Please arrange students in groups of three or four students. What is the source of income received by households to purchase goods and services in the two-sector circular flow economy model?
answer is the source of income is payment received by households for the resources that they supply to business firms. The payment or income received can be in the form of wages, rent, interest and profits. Students, I hope you have understood the two-sector economy model with saving. Now, let us see the three-sector circular flow model. In this model, in addition to households and business firms, the economy has the government sector. So here we relax our assumptions of two sector and no government sector. In three sector circular flow model, there are two economic activities of government, namely government revenue and government expenditure. Government gets revenue by imposing tax on households and on firms. Government on its part spends the money it gets on purchase of factors of production, purchase of goods and services, transfer payments for households and on subsidies for business firms. Students, to understand this concept better, let us look at the following circular flow diagram. As you can see in the figure, government is the third sector in the economy. Government collects taxes from both households and business firms. For example, households pay income tax for government and business firms pay profit tax. Through collecting taxes, Government pays for households who supply resources. For instance, government pays its employees who supply labour. Government also pays households transfer payments such as pension benefits. Similarly, by collecting taxes from business firms which produce goods and services, Government purchases goods and services from business firms and gives it as subsidy to the firms if needed. Students, now I want you to discuss the answer to this question in pairs. After you both agree on the answer, tell your teacher. If you don't agree on the answer, wait until you hear from me.
students. I hope you have answered the question correctly. The sources of income for households and three sector circular economy model are income received from resources supplied for business firms in the form of wage, rent, interest, and profit, and transfer payments given to them by government. Students, we are about to wind up today's lesson on the circular flow diagram. Before I summarize the main points, I want you to do another activity. Choose the correct answer in two minutes. Here is the question. Which of the following is not a role of the government in the circular flow diagram? A. Buys resources from the source market. B. Buys goods and services from the product market. C. Supplies goods and services. D. Collects taxes from households and businesses. E. Receives transfer payments from households and subsidies to businesses. I hope you've got the correct answer. The answer is E. This is because the government does not receive transfer payments from households and subsidies to businesses. Instead, the government spends money for such payments. Students, now let me summarize today's lesson. Today, We've learned that there are two types of circular flows, namely real flows and money flows. We have also seen two models of circular economic flows, namely the two-sector model of circular flow and the three-sector model of circular flow. In our next lesson, we will start Unit 2, which is about demand, supply and elasticity. Students, that's all we have time for. Until we meet in the next lesson, it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.